Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Uh, Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us on the web over at quicksurf.com. Uh, if you have not already done so, please do subscribe to the show, whether it be on YouTube or with your podcatcher of choice. And uh, you can shoot me an email, linux at quicksurf.com. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Over at the BBC, there's a uh, pretty interesting story here on Raspberry Pi. Uh, the article is entitled, Students Spend Summer on Raspberry Pi and Talking Web. And one of the projects that they had on Raspberry Pi was called Pi Play. And so what they've been doing is making a game that you can plug into your TV that runs on the Raspberry Pi. And they have sections of the source code that the game player can go in and manually modify if they want to change the color of a character or maybe you know the position of a block or something of like that. The goal is to kind of maybe help kids get interested in technology and writing code and doing all that stuff that you know kids of my generation uh, used to do. When I was a little kid, all I wanted to do was be a computer programmer. Now that I'm a computer programmer, all I want to do is do something else. But anyway, no- nonetheless... Um, you know, the, the goal of it is, and I think it's a great goal, it's to get kids interested in uh, computer coding again. And so this is, a, it's actually already turned out uh, some interesting results where kids would go in and change parts that, that you know, they weren't expecting them to change. So pretty interesting. Uh, check the story out. From gigatux.com, uh, Gigatux is offering a turnkey Linux 12.0 on its Linux VPS packages. In London, uh, they are proud to announce the completion of its packaging program to upgrade all turnkey Linux distributions to the most recently released version, 12.0. So if you are a turnkey Linux user, please do go check this out. From uh, Bodhi Linux, uh, Bodhi Linux 2.1.0 has been released. Uh, Jeff Hoogland has blogged about it. Uh, Bodhi Linux's website points directly to this post, so I'm going to uh, slightly paraphrase here. He says here, I'm happy to release to everyone our first scheduled update release of Bodhi Linux 2.x.y branch version 2.1.0. For those that want to get this straight to the disk images, you can find them in 32-bit flavor and 64-bit flavor here and here. He provides links. As always, everything we talk about is linked up in the show notes, so you can check that out. Uh, there are a number of wonderful changes slash improvements to this disk over our 2.0.1 disk released a couple of months ago. And then he's going to go outline the full change log there. If it's something you're interested in doing, by all means, check it out. Like I said before, everything we've talked, we talk about here in the show is linked up in the show notes over at quicksurf.com. Over at IT Wire, uh, there's a story here. Red Hat uses the GPL to hit back in a patent suite. This has apparently been going on for a while. I don't know why I didn't catch it before. Um, according to uh, Grok Law, Twin Peaks, the company that has come after Red Hat, launched a patent infringement action six months ago. The suit resol- revolves around a Red Hat subsidiary, Gluster, which makes the Gluster file system. Um, This file system is used by the Red Hat storage server, and Twin Peaks holds a patent for something called the Mirror File System, which is a virtual file system um, that links between two file systems and mirrors them in real time. Cluster File System also provides this functionality, which is one of the reasons why uh, Twin Peaks is going after Red Hat uh, with regards to this. Obviously, Red Hat is using the GPL to counterclaim. Um, their counterclaim means uh, it's related to Mount, which is a utility it has owned since the year 2000, which has been released under the GPL. And under that license, source including any changes needs to accompany software, the software with which it is distributed. They're saying that uh, TPS MyMirror and TPS Replication Plus 
has used code from Mount, so it's turned into a tit for tat. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. I'll be keeping an eye on this as things develop. Um, I'm surprised I didn't run across it before, but I saw it pop up while I was going through the news this evening. So uh, here you have it. Over at the Inquirer, there's a, a story here at the Inde Intel Developer Forum. They're saying that uh, their new Clover Trail platform will not work with Linux. This is to uh, much dismay to everyone in the o Linux and open source community, uh, especially given that large portions of the uh, Clover Trail platform is you know, taken from major other aspects of their other platforms that do run on Android powered stuff and tablet, you know, Android powered phones, Android powered tablets, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, you know, everyone, including myself is kind of scratching our head wondering, uh, you know, what, what's going on with this. Maybe, you know, Intel just has another specific, you know, platform that'll be specific for Linux. Who knows? Only time will tell. Over at OpenSUSE.org, uh, they have released an EDU version of 12.2. Um, the education team presents Life, which is Linux for Education, built on top of the hot new OpenSUSE 12.2. It includes all of the post-release updates. Um, it comes bundled with a lot of software useful for students, teachers, as well as IT admins of educational institutions. Apart from the stable versions of KDE and GNOME, Cinnamon is also available. Sugar Desktop Suite makes a comeback thanks to the work of Zin Yang Packaging. Uh, Life also gives full multimedia experience right out of the box without having to install anything extra. Um, you can get it as a live installable uh, DVD ISO or... Uh, you can download it um, and install it uh, directly from a previous version. Um, comes in at about 3.3 gigs. Not bad. Check it out. From canonical.com in their news and events section, I saw this post. There's been several posts at the various news websites around the the internet, uh, and I just figured I'd just link to the original uh, press release from Canonical. Uh, landscape update improves ROI and compliance for Ubuntu in the enterprise. Um, they're claiming that landscape users can expect a return of more than 1,000% over five years. That is dramatic. It makes me wonder, you know, who they're paying off, but sometimes stuff like that really is worth it. Um, anyway, <clears throat> today, the point of this... Uh, update is their uh, canonical is announcing a significant update to landscape which is its enterprise grade systems management tool for large deployments of ubuntu desktops servers and cloud instances so uh, if you are a landscape user go check it out uh, there's a new version out there go get your uh, landscape on from southampton.ac.uk, the University of Southampton, off of uh, their website, they have this nice little news article here, Southampton Engineers, a Raspberry Pi supercomputer. Um, Raspberry Pi has been uh, making quite the rounds lately. Um, the few times I've talked about it here on Linux News Log, I've gotten lots of really great feedback about it, so I figured I'd keep the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi train uh, ticking uh, right along, chugging right along, keep bringing you guys Raspberry Pi news. Anyway, this particular story here uh, is pretty neat. Uh, basically, Professor Cox and his son James have uh, purchased a bunch of Raspberry Pi um, cluster nodes, for lack of a better way of saying it. And uh, what, they, what they've done is lash them together with a custom Linux load that allows them to operate as one large supercomputer. And, and uh, Professor Cox's son has made a custom rack made out of Legos with it. Really awesome. Um, check the story out. I'm not going to go into all the details, but it's pretty sweet. I saw it and I was like, oh yeah, there, there's absolutely no way I am not talking about that. So uh, check it out. Over at ZDNet, there's a post here entitled, Is Alien OS Really Linux? Android, a ripoff of both. Uh, Stephen J. Von Nichols has posted this in the Linux and open source section of ZDNet. And um, we, we touched briefly on this on the last episode. Um, and uh, apparently there's more to it. Um, 
check the story out. I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention since we're already running way longer than we normally do for this show. So uh, by all means, go check it out. That'll do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online at quicksurf.com. And uh, also uh, shoot me an email, linux at quicksurf.com, if you have any stories that you want me to take a look at and possibly talk about. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.